So now we're going to talk about the bag of words algorithm. As we mentioned at the beginning, one problem with modeling text is that it's messy. And techniques like machine learning algorithms prefer well-defined fixed length inputs and outputs. Machine learning algorithms cannot work with raw text directly. So the text must be converted into numbers, specifically vectors of numbers. If we want to use text in machine learning algorithms, we'll have to convert them to a numerical representation. One of the methods is called bag of words approach. Now the bag of words model, or BOW for short, is a way of extracting features from text for use in modeling and it ignores grammar and the order of words. Once we have a corpus, so text data, then first a list of vocabulary is created based on the entire corpus. Then each document or data entry is represented as numerical vectors based on the vocabulary built from the corpora. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import NLTK and let's do an example. So I'll type sentence underscore one and then equals I love studying math in double quotation marks. Then I'll do sentence underscore two equals I love studying statistics. And then I'll do another sentence underscore three equals I love driving. So we're gonna represent this in a numerical way, but first we're gonna combine all these sentences and then tokenize and get distinct tokens. So to do that, text equals double quotation marks, a space, double quotation marks, dot join, opening parentheses, opening square brackets, sentence underscore one, comma, sentence underscore two, comma, sentence underscore three, closing square brackets and closing parentheses. So what we've done here is combine the sentences with spaces between them. Now we tokenize and get the distinct tokens as a list by using the set function. To do that, we will type tokens equals list, opening parentheses, set, opening parentheses, nltk.word underscore tokenize, opening parentheses, text, and then three closing parentheses. And then next line, tokens. And you see your output there. So this list will be the major reference for us when converting the words into numbers. So let us now go ahead and represent our sentences as vectors. On your screen are the list of terms that we will use to do this. So let's say that the first sentence is, I love studying math. So it does not include the terms driving and statistics. So let's type BOW underscore one equals opening square brackets. And then we will type one comma one comma one comma one comma zero comma zero closing square brackets. And this is of course because we have I, we have math, we have the term studying, we have the term love, but we don't have the final two terms, driving and statistics. So that is why we have zero zero to end that off. Let's now write BOW underscore two equals, and let's say this sentence is, I love studying statistics. So this time we are missing math and driving. So in these opening square brackets, we're gonna put one comma zero, because we don't have math, comma one, comma one, comma zero, comma one. And then let's do our third sentence, which will be, I love driving. So here we don't have math, we don't have studying, and we don't have statistics. So BOW underscore three equals opening square brackets, one comma zero comma zero comma one comma one comma zero. So simply said, 
A bag of words is a representation of text that describes the occurrence of words within a document. That is, each document or data entry is represented as numerical vectors based on the vocabulary built from the corpora. The intuition is the documents are similar if they have similar content. It is called a bag of words because any information about the order or structure of words in the document is discarded. The model is only concerned with whether known words occur in the document, not where in the document. As you can see while working with large texts, there will be multiple occurrences for some words, and we need to represent this as well. So this is where the term frequency comes in. So now I'm going to show you two methods to calculate frequency. The first one will be called count vectorizer, and the second one is called TF-IDF vectorizer. So when it comes to the count vectorizer, we merely count the appearance of the words in each text. For example, if there were two math terms inside sentence underscore one, since math is the second item in the reference list, the second item in BOW underscore one would be two instead of one. So for example, BOW underscore two equals opening square brackets one comma two comma one comma one comma zero comma zero and closing square brackets. So now let's see how we can do this in Python. First, we're going to use count vectorizer from sklearn to create a matrix of numbers to represent our sentences. With count vectorizer, each message is separated into tokens and the number of times each token occurs in a message is counted. We'll at first import count vectorizer from sklearn and then instantiate it as an object, similar to how you would with a classifier from sklearn. In fact, the usage is very similar. Instead of using fit and then predict, we will use fit, then transform. So we'll type in from sklearn.feature underscore extraction dot text, and then import count vectorizer, and the next sentence VECT equals count vectorizer with opening and closing parentheses. Now using the fit method, our count vectorizer will learn what tokens are being used in our sentences inside the corpus. That is, we at first train our count vectorizer model with the training set and then let the model learn the tokens. Then whenever we throw a new sentence to this model, our count vectorizer model will show the matrix representation of that sentence or use the matrix representation of that sentence. So let's train our count vectorizer model. To do this, we'll use the first five sentences extracted from our sample underscore text. So to do that, we will type with open, opening parentheses, double quotation marks, sample underscore text dot txt, closing double quotation marks, comma, and then in double quotation marks R, closing parentheses, as F colon, and the next line, sample underscore text equals F dot read, opening and closing parentheses. Next line, S-E-N-T-S equals N-L-T-K dot sent underscore tokenize, opening parentheses, sample underscore text dot lower, opening and closing parentheses, and then another closing parentheses. Next sentence or line, corpus equals S-E-N-T-S, -E opening square brackets, colon, five, and then closing square brackets. And then the next line, we'll type in corpus. So there it is. Now, since there are many stop words and punctuations that are already in the corpus up and they don't add any value, we will simply clean the sample text again with the functions that we've written before. So for that, we at first tokenize each sentence into words and then clean. So because we have done this part before, I will simply just copy and paste this portion here. And then we're going to remove the punctuations and stop words from each token list. 
Actually, we should also apply stemming and lemmatize algorithms to standardize the text, but we'll just skip those steps. Let's remember remove underscore stop words function again. So once again, I'm going to copy and paste this function. So now we can go back to our count vectorizer method and we will type in from sklearn.feature underscore extraction dot text then import count vectorizer and then next line vect equals count vectorizer. The next step is to fit our model vect dot fit and then we'll pass through as our argument clean underscore corpus and the result of this fitting procedure is a subject for machine learning so we'll not get into this now the next thing is by using the get feature names method we can see what features have been created from our messages or what tokens have been learned by count vectorizer you can also think about it that way so we'll type in vect dot get underscore feature underscore names and there we are the next thing that we're going to do is transform our count vectorizer object this will create matrix populated with token counts to represent our messages. This is often referred to as document term matrix. So we'll type in matrix equals vect dot transform and then we'll pass the argument clean underscore corpus. And the final thing we're going to do is we're going to convert this to a pandas data frame for better intuition. So we'll type in import pandas as pd. Next line, cv underscore df equals pd dot data frame. Opening parentheses, matrix dot to array. Opening and closing parentheses, comma, columns equals vect dot get underscore feature underscore names opening and closing parentheses and another closing parentheses and then next line just cv underscore df so as you can see we now have all the frequencies of each token inside a sentence each of our sentences only contain 10 to 15 unique tokens and we have 56 different features so the number of columns in the data frame created from all of our sentences this means each row will mostly be filled with zeros and in order to save space and computational power a sparse matrix is created this means that only the location and value of non-zero values is saved since we're transforming the same sentences into a model fitted from those sentences this is not an issue at the moment but when we try to find a matrix representation of another sentence other than we already have, it's quite possible that many of the features or tokens will not be in the next sentence and all the columns would be zero. So the idea behind the sparse matrix is to save some space because of that issue. However, if we'd like to feed a new sentence into this model and try to get matrix representation, we may have an issue though. Since our model is fitted on the sentences we already have, if a new sentence doesn't have a token that could be recognized by our model, that token wouldn't be represented. Now in this situation, we simply need to append our new message to our original collection and then refit and transform to make sure we don't lose this information. Now look at the above table and note that since there are two universe terms in sentence one and five the entry is two or the value is two for universe now if we have been working on a ml sentence classifier we'd be ready to feed our sentence term matrix into our ml classifier or whatever else we had planned now if we want to just take a look at a specific feature 
we can do that. So let's type CV underscore DF and then those opening square brackets and then just universe with quotation marks around it. And when we do that, you will see exactly what you saw really in that table. And that is the fact that in the first sentence, you see universe twice. And in the fifth sentence, you see the term universe twice as well. So now let me discuss the other method that I brought up earlier, TF-IDF vectorizer. And this stands for term frequency inverse document frequency. Now a problem with scoring word frequency is that highly frequent words really do start to dominate the document. They produce a larger score, but they may not contain as much informational content to the model as rarer but perhaps domain specific words. Now one approach is to rescale the frequency of words by how often they appear in all documents so that the scores for frequent words like the that are also frequent across all documents are penalized. This approach to scoring is called term frequency inverse document frequency or TF idea for short. Now term frequency is simply referring to the scoring of the frequency of the word in the document while inverse document frequency is a scoring of how rare the word is across documents. The scores are awaiting where not all words are equally as important or interesting. The scores have the effect of highlighting words that are distinct, that may contain useful information in a given document. Just like count vectorizer, TF-IDF vectorizer also creates a document term matrix or DTM from our messages. However, instead of filling the DTM with token counts, it calculates term frequency inverse document frequency value for each word. The TF-IDF is the product of two weights, the term frequency and the inverse document frequency. Now term frequency is a weight representing how often a word occurs in a document. Now if we have several occurrences of the same word in one document, we can expect the TF-IDF to increase. Inverse document frequency is another weight, as mentioned, representing how common a word is across documents. If a word is used in many documents, then the TF-IDF will decrease. With the definition out of the way, we'll go through a few examples to see how it works, since the usage is pretty much identical to count vectorizer, and we'll be going through a few examples. We'll make a function to create a DTM from our messages to make things a bit easier and cleaner. So we'll type in first from sklearn dot feature underscore extraction dot text import tfid f vectorizer. So we're just importing it from sklearn. And then we will type in vect equals TFIDF vectorizer, opening and closing parentheses. Then we fit our model, VECT.fit, and then we'll pass as our argument clean underscore corpus. And then VECT.get underscore feature underscore names, opening and closing parentheses. And there we are. Now the next few steps I will copy and paste as we're really running down on time. So we will transform, we'll get this into a data frame, and then we're gonna take a look at sentence one by sorting the TF-IDF scores in a decreasing order. So you see, when you see the output here, you see Hubble and Universe right at the top here. So what can we conclude from this information? Well, it's clear that Hubble and Universe represent the true content of all the sentences. And this is the idea behind TF-IDF algorithm. You assign a higher value for the rare words that are less in number in all the sentences in the corpus, but higher in value inside the sentences they're used.